So I'm gonna try and get this done without losing my voice. Um, so yeah. But, um, so this week we're discussing what Sather and um, what Galder is. Um, so, uh, Raffin really <laughs> did a very in-depth um, history and just the, the very basic facts of what things are. So you can always watch this video to get that information for yourself. Um, I'm going to post uh, a couple of links um, at the bottom of this video. Galder is essentially the singing of runes. And that being said, I don't really know that much information about it because I don't really connect to it that well. Um, rather than singing the runes, what I do is actually call them. Um, and when I say that, um, like, Galder would be the, the singing of the actual name, um, in its proper, its proper name. So, what I do instead is I, um, like I said, I call them. So if I'm doing spellcrafting or, or making a binder and I'll actually call in the specific runes by asking them to be present. So I'll be like, um... I call on Othila and ask you to place your energy within this binder as I'm drawing out Othila. So that's essentially what Galder is. Sater or Saith is a um, is kind of complicated. <laughs> uh, the simplest way of explaining what Saith is is by saying that it's essentially shamanism. Which is not entirely true, um, but it's the closest example that we have. Um, there's also, aside from traditional safe, there's also oracular safe, which is essentially it's it is purely um, actually doing um, oracle work or um, temporarily leaving the body so that a clear message can come through you. And um, leaving the body is actually a huge part of safe. And um, as Raffin sort of pointed out, or it's traditionally known as being sort of a a wild and uncontrolled um, practice. Which, if you've done any research into safe, it seems like a poor explanation of what it is. Because the simple fact is that you actually need a lot of energy and a lot of direction and a lot of strength of will to be able to do safe. It requires a lot of control. And the reason for that is, is a lot of it has to do with astral traveling and just traveling through the different planes, traveling to the different worlds. And yeah, it, it can get very complicated if you don't have a basic understanding of things or a basic understanding of how to do that or how to temporarily leave the body. You can't do it. It's kind of the same thing as saying that meditation is lazy. Well, it's not. It takes a lot of effort. So, um, I actually have a list of um, safe activities um, as um, described by Vinland Svolva, which she does a blog, and um, I'm going to post a, a link to it underneath. And she's got various information. But um, she did actually make a list of um, safe activities that I haven't have written down. But so, um, uh, I'm going to read this list to you guys. And yeah, so uh, the first thing on the list is called up litany, which is called uplooking or meditation. Um, it's, it means uplooking, um, doing meditation, or using breathing techniques. Then there's you. Udiceti, um, which is called out-sitting, or vision questing, or it, it can also be communicating with the dead. So again, you've got the sort of astral traveling. Um, faring forth, which is called shape-shifting, or astral traveling. Um, fetch faring, um, which is asking my fetch to journey, which um, your fetch is essentially um, your totem animal, but it, it's it's something that you have a connection with on the other world or um, on another plane that you can actually send out to do things. Um, 
it's also, um, um, Saith is also known to work, um, to, just to do general healing practices. <coughs> Sorry, which also includes soul sickness and energy work, like Reiki. Um, and then there's something called work cutting, which is just doing herbal remedies. There's runic divination. Um, for Feda, which is communing with higher beings, or in other words, traveling to the different worlds, specifically, um, specifically the world of the Aesir, um, to, um, to the highest of the worlds, to the lowest of the worlds, actually talking to the gods and goddesses, um, and such. Um, th then there's, and I am totally gonna rape this, Sion Verfe, <laughs> which is called eye, which is the same as eye turning or optical illusion, which essentially is doing spell crafting of some sort, and just such that, um, it's done more on a physical level, and it's more like, um, magic or entertain entertaining magic that we have right now. Um, and then there's other things that we apply in daily living. And like I said before, oracular saith is trans work, which one becomes a vessel for a higher being momentarily. So, so yeah, so that's essentially a breakdown um, from someone who practices saith as to what saith actually is. Um, it's really complicated. Again, a lot of it does have to do with shamanism. And a huge part of it is just communing with uh, the deities, um, the ancestors, uh, the elves and the dwarves, and pretty much anything that lies on another level, that's what that's what's going on. It Save has a huge deal of work concerning with just working on things not on this level, not on this plane but working on different planes in order to affect change um, on our own, on our own plane, on our own level, which personally I believe that all, all levels and planes exist um, on top of each other and, and cross over a little bit. There is a little bit of, of crossover, um, which is why you're able to affect change by going to another realm and, and sending something out. By working on, by working with an entity from another realm, by working on another realm, you can affect change. Um, and the idea is, is that you'd be, be able to affect larger change. That being said, Saith also has a huge deal to deal with, just regular spell crafting, which of course, you know, we do on an everyday basis and everybody's capable of doing. It's just, um... <sighs> A safe woman, which traditionally uh, practitioners of safe are um, more prevalently female because it's supposed to be a female aspect, and and actually um, males had to dress up as a female if they were going to practice it, and even then some of them were killed for being males. So um, so yeah, so it is primarily a female thing in this day and age. You're not going to get killed for doing it. You don't have to dress as a woman to do it, but. Um, but traditionally, that that was the case, and and yeah. So I mean, it's it's complicated. Nobody can tell us exactly for sure what everything is supposed to be done for. Which oh, that reminds me. Um, Raffin mentioned uh, mentioned um, tantra something or another. But essentially, um, Saith also works with sexual magic, which again is sort of working on that other level because. Sex tends to place people um, on another plane of existence, and working with the energy that comes forth during sex um, can also affect a large change. But so, I guess in many ways, Saith is also doing advanced witchcraft. Um, but yeah, so 